Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tip for Wednesday here in the Atlantic. Two areas of energy bundling, one in the Caribbean, one over by Africa, and uh, we have Tomas sitting over here south of Haiti. This is a tropical depression now as the recon couldn't find any strong winds yesterday. This has been a tropical depression for nearly 24 hours now and is now organizing slowly. You can see uh, where the spin is over here now. What's interesting is that um, the center was located in here if we turn on the forecast points here's the hurricane center has the center this is where the recon found barely a center last night but i i mean look at the winds in here i see uh i see a relocation sort of off, off to the northeast over here and you might say well but levi look at the look at the satellite estimates of vorticity maxed out right where the hurricane center and the plane found the center last night you know what I don't believe it. Do you see anything else besides west winds in this area where the center is supposedly supposed to be? Look at the low-level clouds very carefully, and I think you'll see that there are nothing but westerly winds in here. I think we have more of a relocation up towards here uh, where the convection is, and you can sort of see the banding uh, trying to come into this, and uh, you'll probably see this try to reorganize. And you can see uh, the convection still west and southwest of Jamaica over here, and this is this is amazing. If you didn't believe me when I said that this was going to uh, show you where the periphery of the high was going to set up, look at this. Right here, look look at the wind flow coming up uh, to the north over here. Look where this lines up over here with the convection uh, near Jamaica over here. This is amazing. I told you this forecast tool has been such a great help, and it really has. Having this convection here showing a clear boundary where the trade winds were converging, and this is showing where your flow is coming up towards the southeast United States, and is showing you where the storm is going to try to go and then intensify. The whole idea here was that this would start to organize slowly, come into this area, and as soon as it hit Jamaica's latitude in here, it would really start to go off, pull in the energy, and then recurve out while intensifying. You can see on the water vapor over here, you got a big trough digging down into Texas, and when these things dive down, it usually means that there's a lot of energy in here that needs to get taken out and distributed to the mid-latitudes. You can see that we have a lot of energy in here. Look at the upper anticyclone over this as this digs in. This is just amplifying in here, and you're getting a lot of ventilation in this area. There is a lot of energy here. It just needs to get focused. After Tomas fell apart, it kind of lost its focus, so this needs to get back together, and if it can, it has the potential to be a very strong storm. Now the interesting thing we've got over here is we have a little bit of a model war. We've got uh, most of the global models such as the European showing a weaker look and the GFS showing a weaker look compared to some more of the high resolution feedback models showing a stronger storm such as the NAM showing stronger and the GFDL showing stronger, likely a little bit too strong here. I like something a little bit in between the two. I still think a category two is the most likely uh, category as this comes ashore. The Hurricane Center is getting nervous now and is down to a minimal Cat 1 uh, with their forecast because this has not strengthened as much as they thought it would uh, by this time. Uh, I still think this is going to try to ramp up tonight and uh, become a tropical storm and strengthen, probably becoming a Cat 1 hurricane at some point during the day tomorrow, but we'll see how this goes over here. If you look at the pattern, there really is no reason why this should not organize right now. This has got a beautiful environment. You can see the jet uh, coming out uh, from this load over here, just ventilating this area beautifully. And uh, you can see the convection going off. Pressure should lower. When they get the next plane in there, I think they'll find a relocated center and probably with some stronger winds starting to, starting to get generated over here. Now again, this is just common sense. The fact that this is supposed to weaken, come back, um, and re-strengthen in this area. This is just common sense. If, if we look over here at the water vapor, again, where is the most favorable? If you're a tropical cyclone, where would you want to be? If you're a tropical storm, where would the most favorable position be uh, for you to be right now? And the answer is right here, south of Jamaica, where this convection has been firing for days. And why is this the best place to be? This is because this is where the trade winds that have been racing out of the east have been slowing down and converging to in this area. This is where they start to pile up and force the air to rise, lowering pressures and forming convection. And this is where the upper air flow has been taking air out of the top of the air column in this area, which also serves to lower pressures, and everything comes together to favor this area, which is why you've been seeing convection north of Panama, bounded by Panama and Jamaica, for over three days now, while Tomas has been over here doing squirrely stuff and weakening and coming over here. So the whole idea was that when it started coming west, the farther west it got, 
The more convergence and less divergence it would encounter at the surface, so you would see the convection start to increase as it has been for the last 24 hours. And then once it finally got into this area where the greatest favorability was, it would start to take off. And then as it turned northeast, it would go out. And again, the periphery of the high is right here uh, where, where the convection said it would be. And this is representing where the turn north was going to occur. So you're going to see this come and reach Jamaica's lo longitude and then come out. And this is just what the overall pattern has dictated for us. And uh, we'll see how things go and how strong this gets. A point to be made is that even if the intensity forecast busts a little bit over here and is too weak, the amount of rainfall you can get out of this in Haiti is astronomical if this takes a slow path out. And this is not a... Rain is all you need in Haiti for a disaster. Uh, we all know this. Um, tropical systems, doesn't really matter what the winds are when it comes ashore. You can get a major disaster. Um, if you simply put rainfall uh, with a slow moving tropical system coming out uh, past uh, the island and this is something that, that these folks need to be ready for because this is a big deal and uh, I'm still I still think there's going to be a cat 2 hurricane most likely window is again a little smaller now for a major hurricane based on the fact that it's still disorganized but I mean it's got a decent spin to it you can see it trying to organize the center over here the fact that it's farther north might play an interesting role here. The fact that it's farther this way as opposed to where it was kind of forecasted to be puts it a little more offset from where the center of the focus of heat is over here. And this is something that the global models could be seeing that the feedback models are missing uh, where the, the hurricane models have this. Uh, the global model, this is where the hurricane models could be wrong is if the focus of heat is too far off to the northeast from where uh, the center of it is over here and if this doesn't get to Jamaica's longitude before turning out might not be able to pull everything in where the global models could be wrong though is also the fact where they uh, distribute the heat too much if we look at where they have it like the GFS in 48 hours you can see how weak it is over here reason being that look at all the lowering pressures baroclinically out in front over here and we saw this with uh, Nicole when she came up across Cuba the fact that she was weak meant that she was overwhelmed uh, by the difference in pressure uh, up here in the focus of heat, uh, the baroclinic lows were actually winning over here and uh, she wasn't able to put it up enough of a fight. But if you get a hurricane to develop and focus its own heat over here, hurricanes are hogs and uh, once you get them going they're not going to, no baroclinic low is going to be able to defeat them in terms of energy output. Uh, so if we get something to go in here, get pulled up, it's not going to be destroyed by uh, the lowering of pressures and focus of energy to the north, but this is what some of the global models show where the um, feedback models may have it a little more right is that it develops a little bit more in here before it comes north and is able to retain the energy. That's why, again, I say something a little in between this and in between this is likely. I don't see a Cat 4 hitting Haiti, and I also don't see just a tropical storm hitting Haiti. I think this will be a hurricane, uh, likely a Category 2. Hurricane Center is a Category 1. We'll see how this goes. Um, but again, even a forecast that's wrong on this is still going to be a disaster for these folks in terms of rainfall. There's a lot of energy here and there's lots of potential, um, but even without uh, the potential for strengthening, you still get the rainfall uh, regardless of the wind. So this is still a very bad situation for Haiti and these folks should be watching carefully. Feedback could still be rapid coming ashore here. This is something folks need to not let their guard down on. We can hope that this doesn't strengthen, but it has the potential to. It's in darn good environment. Even the Hurricane Center mentioned so in their discussion that it's a very good environment for intensification, so folks in here should be ready. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.